Shut up and sit down. Welcome to Sarge Approved. I'm Sarge. I'm here with Frenzy. Hey, Frenzy. Hey, Sarge. <laughs> How's it going? Super duper good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, we yeah. have a guest tonight, and his name is Alex Avery, comedian. Alex, how's it going? Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, hey. <laughs> so, how's, how's it going? You? I'm sorry, uh, I screwed it up. I, no, I, you're good. You're good. I came in. Cool. I came in a little more mellow this time instead of like, "Welcome to Sarge Approved." Yeah, see, that's mm-hmm. what I'm used to. I'm I sorry. I toned it down. Damn it. Yeah, your, your <laughs> calm, your nonchalant manner threw me off. It threw everybody <laughs> off, y'all. Uh-huh. I'm gonna have to. Go, I'm gonna have to go back to the big opening, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. No, you're good. No, I, I tried. We'll it. just move on from it. I tried. <laughs> it. <laughs> um, let's take a second to uh, allow a little time to hear from our sponsor. Hey, this is Frenzy here to talk to you about National Survival Center. This is the place where you can purchase all of your outdoor camping gear and supplies, survival kits, disaster preparedness supplies, bug out bags, and even survival food all with some of the lowest prices on the internet and free shipping on almost everything. You can depend on National Survival Center to provide you with the highest quality gear paired with superior customer service. And when you purchase your gear from National Survival Center, you're not only getting a great product, but you're receiving products that have all been hand-tested to ensure that they'll be reliable, durable, and that they'll function properly. So whether you need some gear for a family camping adventure or maybe you want to stock up for the zombie apocalypse, National Survival Center can provide you with the quality products you're looking for. You can find them at www.nationalsurvivalcenter.com or www.survivedontsuffer.com. Either way, don't suffer. Make sure you survive. Welcome back. We're here with Alex Avery. All right, Alex. Hey, what's up? Alex, you're a comedian. Yeah. And where are you coming to us from tonight? Um, I am in Portland, Oregon, in uh, in the apartment of my girlfriend's my girlfriend's apartment. Um, <laughs> we're, we're sharing we're sharing it, but like you know, it, it, it was hers first, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but you know what? Our clothes are everywhere, so you wouldn't know who's it. Like you, you don't know where our her mess starts and mine stops. It just has combined. Like it, it's it symbolizes our love. Yeah, so it's, it's just meshed together, and there's a smell in here that's not <laughs> identifiable. Your uh, your dirty clothes pile and your your hearts have become intertwined and become become one. intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's very romantic. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's so when beautiful. you when you moved, did you do the whole like we're gonna get rid of a bunch of crap and then bring most of it with you, or did you legitimately? No, I don't have I don't have anything. I don't own things. <laughs> like I don't own stuff. I have I had two suitcases though. I mean, it was funny when I first went to Minnesota, and mm-hmm. I showed and I showed like when I I. I'm not talking to myself. I'm doing a podcast. It's okay. He's in my room. Yeah, yeah, I just told him that. What the fuck is going on? She came home. Like, we can't stop her. She has a key. Like, I know you're not talking to yourself in there. You can take your clothes off. Like, I'm naked. Oh yeah, yeah. I would yeah. Alex is doing a podcast, <laughs> uh, butt ass naked right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I have my pajamas. I like it. Pajamas. Why not? Mm-hmm. It's um, just audio. <laughs> but yeah, it was weird when I first got off the Amtrak to uh, to see my dad in Minnesota or whatever, um, and I ended up staying in Minnesota for like four or five months or whatever. Um, but yeah, I had like two suitcases and my backpack with a skateboard attached to it. And people were looking at me like, oh, you had to bring everything you own with you. And it's like, this is everything I own. It's not that much. It's just books and clothes. <laughs> and all I own is I have clothes and then I have knowledge that I carry with me. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> and a skateboard. You were, and a skateboard. So, so you're only in Minnesota for four or five months, and you became Acme's funniest person of 2016. 
Yeah, in like the first month. I'm a horrible person. It's not. <laughs> it wasn't okay that I did this because I thought I'd stay a little bit longer, um, but things things change. But yeah, I, I came and I wanted to change. I wanted to see my dad. I hadn't seen my dad for like two years, and he was living in Minnesota at the time, and he lives like an hour outside of the cities, which was frustrating sometimes to have to drive from, you know, he lives like just outside of Faribault in this little town canyon that apparently no one in Minnesota even knows about. Oh, so, yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. I've heard of it too. Okay, yeah. it's, it's, it's weird. But, yeah, it's too far away. But he let me borrow his car at least. And uh, so I'd, I'd drive and do whatever mics I could get on or whatever, but it would be kind of just like – if I didn't get to go up, then it was just like a whole waste of like, it would, you know, two hour drive back and forth to find out you didn't get up. You know, it was, I don't know. It was fine. It was, it was still fun. I enjoyed myself, but where yeah. Would, where I, would you usually go? Um, I mean, I tried to hit up all the regular rooms. So like joke joint, uh, mm -hmm. comedy corner. Um, but I do, I do also a couple like random spots that my friend, uh, Nate Nickel, who's another, um, comic, he would, he would show me. Like uh, Wild Times, which is a variety. Like it was the, it's a bar, but it's like a variety open mic. So I, I do a couple variety open mics that have like poetry and music and stuff. And those are kind of fun. Those are kind of fun to do because the crowd does not expect comedy, and then you do comedy. So you could do anything, and uh, yeah, it's 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 cool. Camp Bar was another one like that. But yeah, I try to hit hit up like whatever regular. Um, you know, I'd, I'd get a regular spot at Acme on Monday, which is really nice. Um, Love Acme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Acme is a great room. Oh, yeah, Acme is, like, one of the best rooms ever, and I'm so glad. I I became such a, a way stronger, like, just way stronger. I became a stronger comedian because <laughs> of getting to perform regularly at Acme Comedy Club. I just feel like a jerk because I basically, like, a month, I, like, wrote in like this like nameless stranger i just came in and was all like hey guys what's up i'm doing your contest and then i like win it and i'm all like oh thanks and then i like stay Laters. for a little while then, and then i just leave yeah it's like it's <laughs> you know, horrible it's like very rude i feel like and i didn't mean to be rude it's just like like you know my life kind of just stuff shifts and changes and um i don't know but yeah still i love i love absolutely love acme I hope I hope they don't hate me. They do. Um, I think no. I think that it's cool that it happened the way that it happened. I think, it'd be even cool, I think it'd be even cooler if you were like riding a horse. Yeah, a horse yeah, well, into yeah, town like, and then like horse Clint. out of town. Oh, yeah. Like, see you later. You know, that'd be awesome yeah, too. Yeah, be all, yeah, I'd tip my tip my hat. <laughs> yep. Right off into the sun. You're like, mm -hmm. giddy up, giddy yeah. up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's exactly what it felt like, though. Except, you know, I felt like. Uh, more of an asshole, but, you know, I didn't save the town. I just took their money from a competition <laughs> that some people have been waiting their whole lives to do, maybe. I don't know. Well, how's and, that yeah, competition uh, How's that competition work? Break it down for us a little bit. Okay, well, um, basically you sign up online, and it's a free – it is an amateur competition. So, uh, so I, I believe um, how it worked is if you were a comic that had been – like professional had been paid professionally or whatever you couldn't really sign up um so i i signed up and uh, cuz i still considered myself like amateur i think i think 2 years in 3 years in that's amateur how did they know do so, they have like a database or something you know they don't it's not like it's not like secured or whatever they just go by <laughs> honor honor system okay. or whatever if <laughs> if you're relatively famous or if you're like a regular they'll be like no you can't do this we know if you've won the contest before, well, yeah. you can't sign up again. It's more like that. Um, but yeah, so I, I signed up, and uh, and basically I signed up before I was even in Minnesota, and then I get there. You cocky and, son uh, of a bitch, dude. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Then I then I got there, and uh, it was cool. Like it, it, this, it gets worse. Like it gets worse in the sense that like worse. I got to. I got to, you know how a lot of rooms like that, if it's your first time, they'll put you up immediately. So basically I got to go up at Acme. My first time at Acme, I got to go up and do their open mic. And then they're all, and then the competition was the next week, so I got to do their open mic the next Monday because they're like anyone that's doing the competition gets to do the open mic also. So I got to do two open mics in a row and then perform there um, again like that 
like I think Tuesday or Thursday. So I got to in like two weeks, I got to perform at Acme three times, which is more than most people do in a month. You know. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. And, and it was kind of horrible, and I felt like a bad person. There was, like, some people that would be all like, dude, I've been signing up for the last two months, and I haven't gotten up, and I'd be like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't get up the next week, though, but then I then I did the next – I got through the first round, uh, did the second round, and I almost didn't get through the second round or whatever, like, uh, because I didn't, I didn't win – I didn't win – my second round. I came in second place for my for the second round or how whatever. Do, but how but do they both judge us, it? Yeah, well, um, I believe they have they have like three or four judges in the audience or whatever that score that uh, score you or whatever. Okay, so you so you're doing it in front of a full crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah, it's okay. a full audience, but Good. then they have That's judges nice. in the back mm-hmm. checkered throughout the audience. So the first round is the same thing. I had judges score me. And I I did really well the first round, um, and then I decided to like try out some jokes that I wasn't as confident in for the second round, and I realized that was a mistake. I should have oh. kept with the same set, but it was okay. Dude. It was yeah, I was getting <laughs> yeah, I was getting cocky. Um, but yeah, but I still I came in second place for the second round, and it ended up being enough for me to get into the finals, and so and then I just ended up winning the finals, and I had. Um, Tim Tim Harmston and uh, Mary Mack were some of the oh, awesome judges that judged I've, me. So I got. I've yeah, heard of Mary Mack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was just on Conan. She was on Conan not that long ago. Was she? Um, I just heard her on K Fan like this morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, Mary Mack and um, Tim. They both liked that. It made me feel good because they both uh, liked me and you know voted for me and stuff, and that made me feel good because I really appreciate their comedy and I think they're funny too. Yeah. So it, it 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 just it made me feel like giddy, because um, I was like, oh, these people that I respect <laughs> appreciate me. Like, uh, so yeah, she's uh, yeah, that's cool. She was she was funny frenzy. She she was on uh, K Fan this morning with uh, the Power Trip guys, and she oh, was cool. funny. Yeah. Oh and, really? Yeah, we should try to get her on the show. She the one of the funniest things though that I noticed is she has a she has a thicker Minnesota accent than we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's she's got a thing. She miss. does. Oh yeah, we That's we get awesome. shit from our guests from time to time about our Minnesota accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's got she's got a little video up of her doing some stand up at Acme. I'm gonna have to check out after mm-hmm. our show. You're mm-hmm. a fairly young guy too, aren't you? Yeah, I just turned 21. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, like the See? last. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? December 18th. So I turned I turned 21 December 18th. So yeah, most of my comedy career, I haven't been able to even I haven't been old enough to be able to go into most of the most of the rooms or whatever. Wow. I've either had to like I've either had to run in and do my set and then run back out, or um or some rooms I just couldn't do. I'd had to only do all ages rooms, and so and I had to do my set sober, which is something most comedians aren't used to. <laughs> they just having to go up there without their shot of confidence. Yeah, you gotta have some liquid right. courage in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, wow. So you no. just. I'm not bragging. I'm sorry. You I just swooped into that. town at like 20 mm-hmm. years old, snatched up a a pretty sweet uh, little trophy from the Acme Comedy Club, one of the mm-hmm. one of the best comedy clubs in the country. So good, man. And uh, yeah, and now you're just you you're Alex Alex Avery the prodigy, <laughs> according to Instagram. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> name myself that. Like it was. It was. It was said at first. It was said ironically. My friend Marcus Coleman, great comedian Marcus Coleman. He's hilarious. Marcus Coleman, and then uh, Daniel Martin Austin, who uh, I was on his podcast, Your Fault for Listening, um, a while, like a year ago or whatever. He's also another great comic. But they both, because of my age and because of just like. My personality. If for some reason they named me that, especially Marcus, he'd all be he'd be like the prodigy, and but he said it in a way to like try to irritate me at first. Like he was uh-huh. saying it, he was saying it facetiously or whatever. Um, right. But uh, but after a while, it just started to stick, and uh, and and he he's he'll he'll say things like the uh, he'll be like the prophecy is coming is coming true, coming to fruition, young Alex, and stuff like that. He'll just hit me with like. These weird, like uh, fortune cookie type slights. Uh, 
you're a comedic savant. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's it's not it's I've I've listened to heard some of your comedy. I saw some uh, clips you had up on YouTube, Frenzy. We were both watching them. Oh, cool! Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you're funny, dude. You uh, you had us both laughing, at, and you do a lot of one liners. That's kind of your thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just zingers, just bam, 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 just yeah, firing them out. Yeah, and, no, uh, I I obsess over writing. Um, being in Minnesota, I tried to do uh, a little bit more um, audio stuff. I, I I have a new video up of me in Minnesota, but I didn't do I didn't like videotape um, any of my audio stuff. But I've been trying to do more jokes using like uh, pre-recorded stuff where I have like conversations with myself on stage, or where like uh, I'm lip syncing to myself, or my microphone gets cut and then the audio comes over. And that I'm like lip syncing and talking, talking over it, and just I don't know, using like stuff like that. I guess I'm just trying to be like, I like I'm trying to think, you know, now that I know how to write a joke and I understand the structure of writing jokes, mm-hmm. it's like now you can use anything to create jokes or create a punchline. Anything can be a setup, and anything can be a punchline, and it can be visual, or of course, I mean, you tell jokes audio. Um, but I mean, there's there's different ways to express humor, and uh, and I'm just trying to ex- I guess be more explore that deeper. But yeah, I mean, like a lot of comics that I personally look up to are like Bo Burnham or uh, Zach Galifianakis. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, I like because I love one-liners. So like Mitch Hedberg and Stephen Wright and stuff are like my base. You know, that's like my base of like how to write or understand how to write those kind of jokes. But then like I, I like how uh, Bo and um, Zach kind of take it a step forward and then they, incorpor- they incorporate punchlines and stuff using like just like sometimes like random objects on stage. Uh, I don't want to be like a prop comedian, but I do feel like the microphone, um, the mic stand, the stool – Whatever, whatever is already on stage can basically you, if you can make it into anything you want. You know, if you can like, uh, you you can make it symbolize any other object that you want it to. You know, uh, you can kind of create like a whole oh, environment yeah. just on the stage with just those simple like objects that are already on stage. Mm-hmm. You can cre- you can create like a whole different like this symbolizes this. I mean. Um, one of my favorite examples of that is like uh, Bill Burr in his new in that in his newest special that he has. I guess it's getting pretty old now, but where he starts talking about uh, uh, what what is it uh, curdling and religion and how he just like let that he just like let it go or whatever, and then he like as he's like letting the curdling thing go, he's also like having the microphone drift away from his <laughs> mouth so it gets quieter and quieter that perfectly, yeah. the way he perfectly times that yeah. is like is exactly what I'm talking about where he's using <laughs> it's it's not that he's just telling a joke but he's almost like he's creating um, that that joke is almost like uh, it adds like a depth to it or I, I yeah know, yeah 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 that's a good word depth <laughs> yeah it it adds kind of like depth to that joke it it just um it, it gives it, it gives that that joke an, another level. Mm-hmm, exactly. Definitely. Yeah, it gives it another level, and uh, and it's the same when he's doing the thing about the guy jumping out of the helicopter, and then and then the kid trying to stop him. Like he does, he does. He just has this perfectly timed like. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm starting to just be like go into comedy nerd mode. Um, I guess, I guess when you're young, there's just so many people you look up to. So mm-hmm. it's like it's hard to not talk about other people because uh, I don't know. It's it's weird when uh, it's 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 a little bit weird. Like older comics will be all like, "Yeah, I don't have idols or anybody that I look up to," and I'm all like, "I look up to everybody. I think you're all great. I'm sorry that the light inside of me hasn't completely been snuffed out yet, and I'm not all bitter and cranky." But it's coming. <laughs> the cynicism, it's on its way. The cynicism is there. Like it's starting to like it. It'll sink in eventually. But already, for, now, for well, now, I'm pretty chipper. I think. Can you believe? Yeah. Can you believe this guy's 21 years old, frenzy? No, I can't. It's crazy. It's good. Um, good for you, though. It's, it's, I mean, do you? I mean, not good for you. Like, I mean, you're good for you if you're 41 or 21. I don't care how old you are. I just mean like you. 
you kind of have it figured out as far as what you're passionate about, which I think it takes some people longer to figure that out versus not. And I, however I old you are when that happens, like, I don't know. I feel like it's usually later. Mm-hmm. But then that's what I mean by, like, good for you. Like, also good for you. You're mm-hmm. 21. Like, I, if <laughs> I could go back to 21, I probably would change things. But now that makes me sound old, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Okay. Really, but... <laughs> Uh, that's the, just wait till you're till you're older. You'll you'll oh, see. Till you're older. Most yeah. most uh-huh. people, most comedians, really aren't that funny. Uh, you know, when they're nineteen, twenty years old. Right. But you're funny. Start, it's well, sometimes. Sometimes. I, I'm sometimes I'm not funny. I've, I've had <laughs> I've had bad sets, just like any any person should. Um, and I and I agree. There are a lot of really unfunny, nineteen uh, year old. Um, comedians, twenty-year-old comedians. A lot of them are really unfunny, but the fact that they're starting so early. Yeah. I mean, I started technically. I started when I was uh, eight, eighteen, because I I did I was doing stand-up comedy for uh for my senior project in high school. That's why that's what I was interested in was doing stand-up. And I was originally making a skateboard video because um, I was really into skateboarding and I was filming a skateboard video with my friends and it was going really good. Um, yeah, you any good? I was pretty. I was until I hurt my knee, which <laughs> post, like stopped the video. I couldn't and ruined your career at the same it, time. It ruined my career. I never had a career in skateboarding, <laughs> but I was wait. I was never so know, into man. skateboarding. I, you never know. You might come back for that knee oh. injury. Yeah, dude. I'm no, put I'm, onto the skateboard. I'm, I am way better at skateboard. Skate. I'm way better at comedy than I am at skateboarding like by by far like I I it, I mean yeah I mean it, it, it's nice to find something where I feel like I can actually express myself and I mean nothing against skateboarders but um you know it's it's all physical but they don't they don't you know you know you don't ask a skateboarder the tough questions about like the pressures of society or whatever because they're just gonna do kick flips they're just gonna kick flip over benches that's what they do and that shit doesn't last want, forever honestly, either honestly i don't want to know i'm sorry i keep on yelling i keep on getting excited and i keep on yelling but i don't honestly sometimes there are certain ski- pro skateboarders i don't want to know what they think because i'm gonna get disappointed like i'm gonna be disappointed with what with, with, with what they think about the world or whatever they might have like horrible views or opinions on things and I'm all like I just want to watch him ollie down those stairs and yeah know, just maybe, just go do maybe, tricks go do your tricks go, monkey shut up and go do tricks <laughs> leave the talking to us <laughs> don't speak don't do speak this. at all <laughs> yeah I mean, don't no, even make eye contact go I mean, entertain I, go entertain you know, us monkey they're they're people they're people too so they probably uh, read they read come on hey they're they can people. do all kinds of shit that I can't do yeah, exactly. I mean, it's impressive. I mean, anybody Damn athletic right impressive. ability. Mm-hmm, athletic ability is just impressive. I always wanted to be a vigilante. That was my like. Really? It's still, you just want to go still fight crime? <laughs> Fighting crime is my dream job. Uh, I think everybody I, at some point, at least a, every guy at some point, has has thought about the idea of of putting on a cape and and fighting crime at night. I think I think my girlfriend is the only person that's ever believed. Support. No, she, support. Yeah, she's the only one that supports my dreams of being a vigilante. Comedy dreams too, because she's also a great. Uh, and uh, Angelique Carrington is also a fantastic comedian. Yeah, I am gonna say your name on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, she's mad. Give it a shout out. <laughs> Angelique Carrington. I'm gonna say it again. Is an amazing comedian. Angelique and, uh, Carrington. Mm-hmm. She's a fantastic friend, and I love her very much. And Aww. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm being a dork. <laughs> Uh-huh. It's cute. <laughs> but yeah, she she believes in my dreams and passions, and I believe in hers. And she supports my comedy, and she supports my wanting to clean up the streets of Portland, Oregon, with nothing but my wits and my fists. She believes in this. You could be. You're gonna do. be. You're gonna be the next hilarious crime fighter. The the hilarious crime. crime How much crime is there really in Portland? I don't know. I think <laughs> is there any acting, crime? <laughs> statistically, there's a lot of actually. It's like four. Oh yeah. Huh? Oh, there's a lot of cops. Yeah. No, no, no. Cops started. Anyway. Oh, cop. Oh, yeah. The show cops started. That's what she's telling me. Is the it's... show cops started? So it's a lot of meth labs. There's a lot. Still? Of, I could do. I could do a lot of meth lab drug busts. <laughs> I know there's a lot of. I know there's a lot of 
you have there's sex trafficking, sex crimes. The thing is, like with sex crimes, like you can't go around kicking down people's doors. Why so, not? Yeah, you have to. You I guess you could. Yeah, you have to. I don't know. That it's all. It's I think I think just fighting crime. It's all just like you have to. You have to find the right ones to fight for you. <laughs> no, I mean, what? I what does I that mean? Know, no, I, yeah, that's my slogan. <laughs> so you're just it gonna... sounds like a lawyer commercial. You're just gonna confuse. Right to you're gonna you. confuse the criminals <laughs> with your slogan, and then mm-hmm. you're gonna attack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is why I write you're just out. Gonna, what I first. You just, so you have to you have to perfect mm-hmm. a bunch of like really cheesy. Um, mm-hmm. like superhero movie type one liners then. Yeah, I should own. I would love to write for a superhero movie. That'd there be great. Go. I'd love to write for that. Uh, <laughs> the campier the better. Uh uh-huh. I agree. I need to I would love to write for um T V and film and stuff. That's that's really kind of a goal of mine. Cause, uh I think I think I am more of like a I you know, even though I love stand up, I think of myself as a crafter or a writer when it comes to Doing, doing my girlfriend just rolled her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think of it as like crafting. I love crafting jokes or whatever. Um, and I, I like, you know, working with words and playing with like vocabulary and stuff and, and playing with uh, things like that and creating like surprise. And uh, so, I mean, I'd love to write jokes and, um, Stuff like that for TV, and uh, and I love to write, you know, screenplay or shows or whatever. I don't know why I'm saying I'd love to do that when I should just be trying yeah, just, to do. Like, just go I do it. it. I'm I'm already a gonna do it kind of person, so it's like I just need to start. I need to get my laptop and my reading glasses. I don't even need reading glasses, but I figure it'll help. Yeah, it um, definitely helps. It would you, help me look distinguished, and it would help to, me focus. You need to go get yourself a website. Yeah, I do need to get. A, I haven't been able to make a website for myself yet. Get I'm one of those. To, get one of those, get my friend. To, get a website. Um, yeah, that'll help immensely. All right. How? And no, then don't do WordPress because that's annoying. Oh, okay. I feel like, okay. Like Word, of, what is it? Yeah, a lot of people have WordPress. I don't really like the look of WordPress websites. Yeah, and it's just kind of a weird like when you hand it out or talk about it, it's kind of, it doesn't flow good. I feel like. mm-hmm. I don't know. I know it doesn't sound like... very sexy. Like it's just mm-hmm. kind of like where was I gone? Like <laughs> eh. you're like an old man maybe mm-hmm. with a cigar in your mouth. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, do, I, have, I have WordPress. My website is WordPress. My website's WordPress. Mm-hmm. Com. <laughs> WordPress yeah. more like word pressure. <laughs> to go to my website. <laughs> so, yeah. so or Alex, that. with with you with you, your thing is doing like one liners. Mm-hmm. How how would you turn that into? I mean, what's the most amount of material that you've done on stage? Do you usually do like five minutes or? Oh, you know, I mean, I I, I do well as an opener or a feature. Um, I feel like that right now that's where my strong suit is, but that's also just because I'm young and I'm new and, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've done, I have like 20 minutes of material, uh, entirely. Um, but I've only probably only done about 15 on stage or whatever. Um, I've only had the opportunity to do about like 15 minutes on stage so far, but I have like 20 minutes in total. Um, and I mean, if if it's an audience that really likes me, then like I would be able to go longer because the laughs would be longer, so it's right. a, and more frequent laughter. So I'd be able to like it would add more time or whatever. If an audience does not like me, I probably have like I could do all my material and I'd just be talking to a wall and uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It'd be like ten minutes of it would be a painful ten minutes. Do you think you could get your? Do you think you could ever get yourself up to an hour? Um, I'm my goal is to get to thirty or forty-five. So I know that's, I know that's at least enough for an album if I could get myself to forty-five right. minutes. Um, and I've been writing more bits. I have been writing more because I feel like once you know how to write one-liners, you know how to write, you know how to write jokes, and it's interesting because a lot of people will start with stories. 
and just telling stories for stand up but they don't know where to incorporate jokes or there will be a lot of right. jokes in that story that they don't even realize and they yeah can beef out they could really beef out that story if they know where to put the jokes so once you know where to find jokes and how to write jokes and get the structure of it then you can add more and you understand like what sounds hacky and what what's you know sounds good when it comes out of your mouth i don't know it's just a preference thing um and uh yeah, and it also helps when people ask me, um, you know, about trying to when, – when they're trying to shorten a joke or crispen it up or whatever, when they ask me for help, it helps me know what I've learned, you know. Um, instead of just being stuck in my head trying to write my own material, sometimes helping out somebody else uh, allows me to, like, be like, oh, yeah, I know how this works. I get this premise that they're working with, and I know exactly what to do. Where they're, I know exactly where their setup is and where their punchline should be, and um, I don't know. It, it it's become more second nature uh, over time. So but you don't yeah. have to think of, really even think about it as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it feels natural. It'll it like feels natural. Like I just I I kind of I just understand. Like if if I say the joke out loud, I kind of just understand. Um, the rhythm of it and just why it's funny and mm -hmm. what about it, you know, is, is interesting or makes it, makes it a good joke. Yeah. It's that um, prodigy shit seeping through. <laughs> he's, he's, he just oh, hears man. the jokes. He sees them. He sees the jokes like written in the air in front of him oh, and, dude, and he I just has to, to write... write them down like a junkie. He just has mm -hmm. to write down these yeah, jokes. Yeah, I, I do actually. I've, I've woken up. I've woken up. My he's like a me. Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've woken people up or I've, I've bothered people because I'm all like I need to write something down now like, I don't want to forget it yeah. I do. I like having a phone because that makes it easy I can just use the note thing and just like the notepad thing and just write type in whatever uh, jokes I have that makes it a little bit easier using your phone I picture, I, also... I picture your apartment, the walls just covered with like feverishly scribbled one-liners just all over the walls of your house. <laughs> with like, st well, do you mean like with strings connecting them? Like, yeah. This punchline should be over here, and this yeah. setup needs to be over here, and it's all a conspiracy, man. <laughs> you don't understand the Illuminati the jokes. Oh shit! Yup, that's exactly. They, they that's find perfect. you like tangled up in all the yarn one day. Yeah, that's, like, that's you're that's just like wrapped, wrapped in a cocoon. Be, exactly, it wouldn't be systematically strewn throughout the apartment. I no. would be wrapped up in it with sticky notes all over my face, crying. <laughs> yeah, just rocking back and forth in the fetal yeah. position. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a classic one to be all like, I was rocking back and forth naked. Like that's a, that's a classic go-to. Yep, um, the the Jim Carrey uh, Ace Ventura. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you, you were starving to death, and the only thing you could find was a can of baked beans and a fork, and you mm -hmm. just like sat there and ate a can of baked beans <laughs> wrapped that. up in your yarn, <laughs> post it all over your face, you're just like, fuck yeah. it, this is what it's come down to, that's, I'm good with it. That's rock bottom, a can of baked beans, <laughs> cold baked beans. <laughs> yeah, that's rock bottom, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, food, you are I mean, you can you food. can come, you can come back from that pretty easily. I feel like like you're not doomed forever. It's well, just kind of a, 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 a realization. Like, all right, I'm only moving up from now on. Like, this is <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think this. Okay, so you put me in this position where I'm tied up in yarn, eating baked beans <laughs> and sticky notes. I am not a loser. I have yarn. I can knit myself. <laughs> right. Clothes. I can. I yeah. have baked beans. I have food in my belly. And I have sticky notes, which means I have ideas, and ideas are bulletproof. Yes. Oh, yeah, totally. And I wasn't speaking about you personally. I was just oh, okay. saying, I was just picturing the yarn, and then I was like, what was would make that worse? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I was, was not. specifically Sarge, talking about you. Sarge was yeah. personal. He yeah. totally was. Sarge was attacking me. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> I I can't I can't apologize for him. He's his own his own He's situation. His own man. No, you shouldn't apologize for him. You she need to own up to what you did. She she <laughs> has to apologize for me constantly though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but only if I feel like you deserve it. Yeah, I usually do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, man, you've only been at it for a little while, man, and you uh, you seem to be doing well. I mean, where's what's what's the next step for Mr. Alex Avery, the prodigy? 
stop calling me that. <laughs> like, no, no, it's like, no, it's I'm fine. Stuck. It's just like, I don't know. I, no, it's fine. I don't know. Like, it feels weird when people call me that because it's like, oh. Uh, I, we're we're already getting t-shirts made, so. I know. I need to get t-shirts of that made. Maybe <laughs> I, I need to accept it. Like, I, I know it's a joke. I don't mean it. I don't take it seriously, but at the same time, it is kind of fun. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to get a comedy mixtape together because the thing uh, the thing I like about a comedy mixtape, you know, if you only have say like 20 minutes and you have like 10 that's really really killer, mm-hmm. um, you can work with a couple other friends that have only like uh, you know seven to 10 minutes of really killer material. Yeah. Find a really good room, record yourselves. Not every, um, and it sucks because not every gig you do is going to pay you. So that way you have CDs that you can be like, hey, you liked me on stage? Yeah. Here's, I'm in the middle of a burp while I'm trying to like explain this. But yeah, you can be like, uh, yeah, you liked me on stage. Here's this CD, $5. And, uh, and yeah, merch. That's one thing I learned from being in Minneapolis and stuff is, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the comics there, they have merch and they make, uh, a good portion of their money just selling merchandise, um, Will Spotted Bear and stuff. I was trying to design because I do a lot of artwork and drawing, um, so I was trying to design uh, a thing for Will Spotted Bear. I just I, I just ended up drawing his face basically. But I was like, hey, if you ever want me to draw your, your face for your T-shirts, um, you know, here's what I can make you look like. And it I like how it turned out actually. Will um, Spot well, Spotted Bear? That's another comic. Yeah, Will Spotted Bear. He's a pretty, he's a pretty regular, like, um, pretty, pretty awesome comic in uh, Minneapolis, and uh, you know, he's uh, pretty. I think he's a pretty big deal. Like, he's awesome. Um, I think it's been too long since we visited the comedy clubs there, Frenzy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think that um, I've heard the merch thing before, mm-hmm. where I've, um, someone else that we had on as a guest, and I apologize, I don't remember who said it, but. Mm-hmm. They said something about merch being a big deal, but yeah, mm-hmm. I can totally see that. Yeah. Um, so, side note, just for you know, just to share, I um, I'm currently going to enjoy a Tootsie Pop, and okay. I'm gonna try and keep track of how many licks it's gonna take to get to the center. But I'm still gonna engage with this conversation. I'm just gonna be doing that kind of simultaneously. So stay tuned so if you have any bets. Ev- put them everyone's down right gonna now. be able to hear every single lick that <laughs> Frenzy takes. No, I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna mute it while I'm doing the, the, the lick. I wanna, I wanna know how many syllables it takes to get to the heart of this conversation. <laughs> right? That's what I wanna know. Mm-hmm. Let's find out. This is important scientific research. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're we're gonna. It's very. It's all about the variables and, and testing. Schematics. You gotta mm-hmm. have schematics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do any of us know anything about science except for like what we might read on Facebook? I don't know. Uh, you don't. I don't know what uh, what there's worth reading on Facebook these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Oof, Do love- you um? Do you ever enjoy a good documentary? I do. No, I love I love science. Like I absolutely I enjoy it and that's something I was I love I love trying I do too. To, I just love trying to learn any I mean like is I I sound so nerdy but it's like uh, I just I love any opportunity to learn or discover something. So I just I love discovery and I guess that's what I like about uh comedy is like you get to share those discoveries openly with people in in a, in a way sometimes like uh, even if it's through like jokes or like, you know, just like clever twists or whatever, like you get to be all like, "Hey, I discovered this weird loophole in uh in the English language or something." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You don't so... like the History Channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I love the I like the History Channel. No, you don't. You you said you said I heard your one liner about the History Channel. You're gonna channel. tell me my own joke. I knew where this was going. <laughs> <laughs> Where this is going? Yeah. No, I love that. Do you want me to just say it? Do you want me to just say it's a joke? <laughs> it's a good one. Do you want, it's one of my favorites. It's the first one that ever got me an applause break. So I love oh, that joke. It's a close place. One. I'll just tell it. I'll just tell it so we can. Okay. It. Get it over. Do with. it. Just All do right. it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like uh, yesterday. I was watching the History Channel because that's the best time to watch the History Channel. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I gave, you guys, I gave you what you wanted. Thank you, you sir. 
Thank yeah. you. I needed it. Woo! I just needed a little you fix. Needed the applause. I needed a li- needed just a little fix. bump. That's all I needed. Just need, uh, needed my fix. <laughs> I hope I'm being. Enter- I'm trying to be entertaining enough uh, for this podcast. You're doing all right, man. You're doing just okay. fine. <laughs> all right, cool. You just, you just gotta be yourself. Mm-hmm. Mr. Rogers would say. So, so you're gonna do you're gonna you're gonna work on some merch. You're gonna do a mixtape. You you got some yeah. guys lined up already? Yeah. Um. I'm. I mean, my top choices. I mean, Marcus Coleman. Uh, I already mentioned him. Hunter Donaldson. Um, is one of my favorite people out here in Portland. Uh, if I could get some of my Minneapolis friends somehow, if they could record themselves or. Um, yeah, you could come come here, and I I thought it would be cool to do like a crossover thing, but I uh, I mean Joe Co- um uh, I can't say his name right now Joe Cocazello or uh, Corey Adam um, are both hilarious people. Oh, yeah. spot there, of course. we're probably um, gonna have Corey Adam on the on the podcast excellent. here soon. Yeah, excellent. Yep. Yeah, Corey Corey is great, and uh, I love I love Sisyphus Brewery. That's one of my favorite. Uh, aside besides Acme, Sisyphus is like definitely my second favorite <laughs> thing to do. And uh, and a lot of people don't know about it, which is disappointing because it's a really good room. What is it? Are they dark? They're are they darker beers? I know I sound like I'm not. I don't know what I'm talking about about beer, but they have basically yeah, they diff- have, yeah, they have different dark, kinds, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my dad would always come to Sisyphus, and every time he was there, he'd buy buy a beer whenever I'd be doing Sisyphus? it. Sisyphus. Yeah, Sisyphus. Sisyphus. It's, it's, what the fuck it's, is that? You're gonna, you were going to say syphilis. Syphilis. I already, we already know the joke you're going to make. Sisyphus is a Greek myth, and it's about it. I'm trying to remember. I I because I love Greek mythology. Sisyphus. And Sis, Sisyphus. He's Sisyphus. He's, Sisyphus. His, his, okay. his, his punishment is pushing a boulder um, up a hill uh, continuously. He he he's he resides in Hades, and his punishment is he has to push a boulder. Up oh, that's that hill. guy. Yeah, 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 and then once he gets to the top, it rolls back to the bottom, and then he has to start the labor over again. Yeah, and push it back he's up. like so a dung beetle. He's like a dung beetle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm poor bastard. Um, I've been. I think I've been there before to the brewery before. It's a good brewery. Yeah. Sisyphus. Sisyphus. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> it's, <a laughs> it's in Minneapolis. That's a silly name. Mm-hmm. So what is what's what yeah is, the Greeks the Greeks and their silly names the crazy they're so silly what, so, what is Sisyphus? I just told you it's a it's a no you, you told me the story a, oh yeah the origin of what Sisyphus mm-hmm. is but like what's Sisyphus here in Minnesota oh it's a brewery it's, okay. it's a brewery and they have a really nice room in the back for doing comedy like you oh know, yes yeah. You go to the back. It's this really. It's it's. They decked it out. They went all out with their comedy room. It's a nice comedy room. It has like the classic brick wall. I mean, it feels like comedy in that room. It's I great. like that brick wall thing. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but I just like that look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, it gives it like a, gives it like a, oh hey this this comic it could get punched in the face and crack his head open any second because someone didn't like what he said <laughs> kind of feel. That has never crossed my mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was. I, I just thought it was aesthetically pleasing, but <laughs> I think it's funny because, like, whenever there's brick walls like that, it always looks like the comic is like in a like in a spotlight. But like when you're trying to escape from prison, yeah, right. Like, so, and I wear all black, and I'll wear like a black beanie and stuff. So it's like I look like a burglar on stage. So I look like I'm being caught. Like my whole life, <laughs> so I look like I'm being caught in the spotlight the whole time. And I'm all like, oh, no, they're going to get me. Like, you just look like a deer, like, caught in headlights, your whole act. <laughs> you should just go through and, like, steal people's food, like, walk through the audience. No, I do that anyway. Like, I, I don't do <laughs> but, but, but Sisyphus does uh, Amateur Hour on, on Thursdays, and Corey Adam hosts it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, that's it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, really? Yep. Mm-hmm. Does the open mic. It's a good, it's a fantastic open mic. Um Oh, I think uh, definitely got to check that out then. Okay. Need to get out to the comedy clubs. I haven't been out there in forever. Frenzy, we mm-hmm. should we should go to some comedy clubs. Yeah, yeah we need to, we need to do some research. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys mm-hmm. are you've been interviewing <laughs> comedians. You haven't been to the comedy clubs where? No, we have. It's just been we a have while. just not. It's been a little bit because of uh, the holidays and stuff. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah, give us a break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so, so you got the, you're going to do the mixtape. What else you got going on? You got any other plans for the future? In your oh, future? Man. Where's this comedy know, like, thing going to take you? I don't, I don't know. Like, uh, I was, I have a couple, uh, people that have asked me to, uh, about if I'd want to go to LA or would consider going to, uh, Los Angeles or whatever. Um, so, I mean, you know, that, that might, that's, that might be on the horizon going to LA and, um, seeing about, I don't know, getting, getting more spots on TV or some, something like that, trying to act more. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like the mixtape is my big thing that I'm trying to do right now. Um, I'm only 21 though. So it's like, I'm just trying if I can just try to make a okay, decent living at a comedy right now, um, or even if it is a little bit of struggling, if I can make some sort of living though doing comedy, mm-hmm. and then I guess from there working towards trying to have like 45 to 50 minutes, maybe trying to become a headliner, going from being a feature opener feature to being a headliner um, more regularly, hosting things more regularly. Um, and uh, I was going to... Uh, I was actually going to audition for America's Got Talent um, this week, but I don't have money to get. I don't have the money to get to Vegas. Uh, uh, yeah, it kind of kind of a bummer. But um, uh. yeah, so yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, I kind of came here, and then I was gonna go up to Spokane, um, where my friend Freddie Walker is, because he's also auditioning for it, and he was gonna take me, and we were gonna drive. Uh, down to Vegas together, and we were going to audition, but I did not have the money um, because I had to pay rent and buy food. <laughs> priorities. Where are your priorities? Where are my priorities? <laughs> I know. I am not starving, and I live in a house. I'm an idiot. You can't hate on that. Somebody send yeah. Alex Avery some money so he can go audition for America's Got Talent. Somebody mm-hmm. out there, send him some money. <laughs> well, you I think you should just keep writing and writing and writing yeah. as much as yeah. possible. You should definitely look into getting a website, I think. Yes. And and yes. just That's yeah, record your shit as much as you can. Mm-hmm. And you know, you have a website, YouTube, just get your shit out there as far and wide as possible cuz you're funny and I think if as many people as possible can see you and know that you're you're out there, um, this 21 year old kid who's just firing out zingers, um, mm-hmm. then, uh, it's just going to grow from there. I mean, you just, I, gonna... I hope so. You're um, funny, man. I mean, it's not like, it's not like you're just a hack and you're, you're trying to get your name out there. You're actually, you're, you're, yeah, I've, a lot of comedians say that, Okay. you know, even the ones who have been doing it for 20 plus years and are already established and, you know famous as hell they still Mm -hmm. get up there and they say they feel like like they're a hack or they feel like they're a fraud you Mm -hmm. know everyone feels that way i guess i guess it's good to have some doubt then because if you think you're the shit and you're not like realistic with yourself i i'm just i just try to be realistic with myself douchebags aren't funny douchebags aren't funny no they've never they they make me laugh and it like when someone's uh when someone succumbs to their own arrogance and they basically like um like if you've ever seen someone be like way too cocky on stage and you watch them like where they like, you know, come on like I don't even give a shit or whatever what you think and you watch them slowly deflate yeah. while they're on stage. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing to watch that um, deflation of their of their confidence because they didn't come up with any substance. Yeah, I think the best comedians are the ones that are at least a little bit damaged or a little bit fucked up in some way or another. Mm -hmm. Those make the best comedians. Those make the most talented, uh, creative people, um, Mm -hmm. I believe. I I agree. I agree. I also just think it's anybody who tries to be a thinker or just chooses to um, question and think about things. You know what I mean? I think think everybody has – you know different types of uh, struggles and um, different issues that they're they're dealing with or persevering through, um, but it's really just you know your mindset and being motivated, getting up and uh, showing up to the open mics and showing up regularly 
and forcing yourself to write and enjoying it. You have to enjoy it, too. You can't hate writing. You can't hate being at the open mic. So you have to enjoy. I enjoy every step of comedy. I enjoy every part of the process. And, uh, and I think that's, that's really where a lot of it comes from, is enjoying yourself and having a love for it is um, what's going to keep you doing it. So, I mean, when I first, very first started, you know, being um, 18 to 20, I was uh, living with my mom. I was across the bridge of Portland. I wasn't even in Portland. I was across the bridge in Vancouver, Washington. So I'd have to, I'd have to ride my skateboard um, down the hill from my house, take a bus, uh, and then take the max train, and then take another bus to maybe do two open mics. Um, where I'd get like three or five minutes of stage time, and then like it'd be midnight, and I'd do the whole thing and ride all the way back, ride my skateboard back. So I mean, you know, it kind of taught me like, and sometimes it'd be raining or whatever, and I have to like actually Dante's, which was a regular spot that I'd hit up. They have a strip club right next to it, and I'd take shelter in the strip club when it's raining because I couldn't go into Dante's because oh, I was underage. Be <laughs> so I had to. So they had an all ages strip club. Um, that would be 18 and up, and I wouldn't go into the strip club because I was too afraid. Uh-huh. Uh, but I'd, I'd hang out in the in the lobby area if it was raining. I'd hang out in the lobby, and I'd wait for Richie Stratton, the host, to come out and be like, Alex, you're up. And so I'd like then come out of the strip club stairwell, and then I'd run around the gate and then like go in through the doors, and then I'd like run up on stage, and I'd do like three minutes of material – and run back out and be all like, all right, that's good. And then I'd go to Brody or I'd go home or something. So, <laughs> but I loved, I loved doing it. Like it's, it's, it was hard work and sometimes yeah. it wouldn't feel rewarding. But when it does feel rewarding, it really is rewarding. And, uh, and it's, it's worth it. felt always felt worth it to me. I always felt like I was, you know, doing something. And it's better than doing nothing. Yeah, you're grinding it out, man. You're putting in the work. Mm-hmm. And, so, it's, and it's going well for you, apparently. I got lucky, yeah. I mean, like, I'm I'm getting pretty lucky, um, but I, I think I, I think it's just I'm a little I get a little obsessive too because I'll like I'll get obsessive about wording and just like um, the word count of my jokes and like the rhythm of my jokes. Like, I get obsessive about like little details and like when yeah. I watch videos of myself being all like, oh, I'm doing my stage presence is weird this way. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. That was kind of dumb. So I think scrutinizing yourself. Is, is extremely important, you know, you know, like, all right, that got a laugh, but it didn't get the kind of laugh I wanted, or that got a reaction, but it wasn't the re- reaction I was expecting, so you have to, like, scrutinize and think about, um, you know, you're working with people, so all these different uh, variables can happen, All the, it's always a different environment, it can be the age of your audience, or, you know, the upbringing of your audience, their background, is going to uh, affect how they appreciate or think about your jokes and stuff. So, I mean, it's just like there's so many different things that can happen. Um, That's good, though, that you, you know, you, you're putting in that time and that, that, that kind of obsessive um, approach to it because, you know, the, the, the people in the crowd that are listening, they mm-hmm. may not notice that you've put so much meticulous time into the spacing of your your words and the timing then how how and when you deliver it and, mm-hmm. and you know this this process that you've you've gone about to write all this material they may not notice that mm-hmm. that you've done that but they will notice when you haven't done that and it comes out all choppy it's and, true no yeah, you know yeah what if, I mean? if, if it's good if, if if a set is good or if, if you've done well if you've practiced and you've been working and writing and just being um, obsessed with what you do It'll look natural when you're on stage. It'll be, yeah, they're it'll just gonna look, laugh. It'll look natural. It'll yeah, there'll be no lag. It'll be just like it'll just be like boom, boom, boom. Everything will be just like fall like fits into place. But when you've slacked off somewhere, you know, when there's like a fatty piece in your act or whatever, it'll be so like it'll be spotted immediately. <sighs> yeah, that's when it gets like awkward. Wolves, wolves, like people, people will just like devour that one bit. Oof. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I don't know. It's crazy, but I love it. I absolutely love doing comedy, and uh, I just I just want to continue writing, being a better writer. Yeah, you should just write, 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 man. Mm-hmm. I I try to write. I like to write five to ten complete jokes. So you know, sometimes people will just write down an idea in their notebook. But the thing is, if you just write down an idea 
you'll forget about that idea. You'll you'll kind of like yeah. you'll have to dig through it or dig for it later. But if you write down a fully formed joke, even if it's not the final version of that joke, if you write down the fully formed joke where you think it's funny, um then then you'll remember it and yeah, it'll be can... it'll be just it'll be lodged in your brain um, deeper and you'll know to come back to it and you'll just it'll force you to work it work through it in your brain and that way you can think of that fully formed joke throughout the rest, rest of the day and uh, and decide whether or not you want to keep it the way it is or switch anything around or if it can go in a certain part of your set or if it's even that funny like um, so I mean, I don't think it's wrong to write. I don't think it's wrong to write a bad joke. Uh, it's just it's just not always it's it's wrong to tell a bad joke. It's not wrong to write a bad joke down. No, I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. Hey, frenzy, how's that Tootsie Pop coming? I'm done with that. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the, what's the count? Um, it was like I'm. You stopped. Torn between, you didn't even no, pay like, attention, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. It was like 134. Holy shit. Till I could bite into it. And then after I bit into it, I stopped counting. Jesus. Well, there you have it. 134. That's the official number, apparently. 134. <laughs> yeah. Um, where, uh, where can people find you? Alex Avery. Um, yeah, tw- yeah, you can find me. Uh, Alex Avery is dead on Twitter. You can find me on uh, YouTube. I have my Portland's Funniest Person video, and I just uploaded um, my newest video today that I painstakingly worked on to edit on my iPad, um, which is just my uh, – it's it is like uh, bits and um, clips from my time in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Instagram, uh, Alexander Avery the Prodigy is my Instagram thing. <laughs> And then just Facebook, it's Alex Avery. So, um, where did the Alex Avery is dead come from for your Twitter handle? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I think it was late, and I felt I was like I'm dead inside, and uh, I decided to write that down. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's 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 it forever, though, man. That I think I say you stay stay with that one. It's a good cool. one. Why not? Yeah. Alex Avery yeah. is dead. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> I think that's pretty badass. Cool. So, um, well, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. We're right about an hour here. Awesome. Um, thanks for being with us, man. Absolutely. Let uh, us know about your uh, your journey so far as a mm-hmm. as a young and uh, and up and coming prodigy comedian. <laughs> yeah, if you get a horse too, you should like send pictures. You can ride mm-hmm. it on a ride back in on the horse when you come back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm picturing like a, a Clydesdale, maybe, or like a Clydesdale. I don't know anything about horses. <laughs> I know nothing about horses. <laughs> those are the Budweiser horses. I don't think you're mm-hmm. supposed to ride those, but that'd be so cool. Yeah, you'll have to let us know next time you come uh, to Minnesota. Try and get a spot at Acme. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. I hope they have me back. Um, I'm sure they we'll would. See. You're alumni I that, now. I guess so. Yeah. I, right. Yeah, I hope I hope it's cool. I hope I'm cool. I feel like I just kind of upped and leave. Uh, I just kind of upped and up and left. Um, you left them wanting more. That's what you did. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do in showbiz, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I always leave them wanting more. Mm-hmm. All right, Alex. Well, thank you so much for being with us. It's been yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you, Sarge. We'd uh, we'd love to thank have you, you. back on sometime. And uh, let us know when that uh, when that mixtape's all done. I want to check that all out. Right, cool, cool, cool. That'd be great. All right, I will. Thank you. Thank does you that mean that? Much. But quick question: Does that mean we have to buy like a boombox to listen to it? Or are you going to put it on like a CD? Yeah, it's going to be. No, it's going to be a CD. Tape? It's, it's going yeah, oh. to be like a comedy death rate. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like a variety tape with you know different comics. Yeah, you can put that on online too as like a digital yeah. download. I'll probably do it like we'll, we might put it on iTunes or yeah, um, yeah, so, something like that. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, uh, I like it. Perfect. I like it too. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, all right, my friend. All right, thank you guys. You have a good night. You too. All right, that was comedian Alex Avery. He was the winner of Acme's Funniest Person in 2016. 
funniest. He's only 21. Yeah. Dude's doing things. Uh, you can find him on Facebook, Alex Avery. He's on Twitter, at Alex Avery is dead. <laughs> uh, he's got some videos on YouTube. And on Instagram, Alexander Avery, the prodigy. The prodigy. He's a prodigy. Um, you can find Sarge Approved on iTunes. We're on Spreaker. The The Spreaker app is pretty slick. Um, <clears throat> we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's all at Sarge Approved. It's all Sarge Approved. All the things are Sarge Approved. Just look up Sarge Approved. You'll find us. It's not that hard. We're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, go check out National Survival Center. Go get yourself some badass gear so uh, you're ready when the zombies show up. Because they're coming. They're on their way. (laughs) They're on their way. So uh, we're going to play out. uh, Actually, we should probably tell people who we got coming up. On Wednesday, who do we got? We have Eric Blake on Wednesday, the 18th at 9. Comedian. And then on the 19th, we have Barbara Kennedy, author. Yeah, I think she's got a publishing company, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those are our guests this week. We're going to play out this episode with a song by the band Sound of Ground with the song Shelter Between Sky and Ground. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Bye. Later, fuckers. (laughs) 